Hello everyone, welcome to another tutorial video for predictive analytics. Last week I introduced how to do regressions in Stata and this week since our regressions are going to continue to become more complex, I'm going to dig a little deeper into how to use Stata. This video will cover how to create and manage variables, how to load a data set into Stata, how to write and run a do file, and then we'll run some regressions with the variables we make. What you see in front of you is the ACS data from Illinois and Indiana that we've used before. Now last time we copied the data and then pasted it into Stata's data editor. And we can continue doing that, but with large data sets, that can be kind of a hassle. So I'm going to show you how to import an Excel sheet directly into Stata. To do that, we're going to go to the File menu, Import, click Excel Spreadsheet, and then we're going to browse to the sheet we want. And mine is called ACS 2014. I'll open that. Now Stata will take a few seconds to load this into memory. Once that happens, everything will show up down here. Now what we want to do first is make sure to check the box import first row as variable names. And as you can see, that moved the variable names up into the header. Now we are ready to import, so we'll click OK. Now if we go back to the data browser, we can see that our data set has properly loaded into Stata. Now it's important that when you first get into Stata, you make sure that you are working in the directory that all of your files are in. So what you want to do is go to File, Change Working Directory, and then navigate to the folder where you're going to keep everything in. So I'm going to do that right now and go into my X522 folder, click OK. Now anything that Stata saves for me will go right into that folder where I want it. Let's save our data set so that we can use it later. As I've mentioned before, it's very important to save your data in the most raw form that you have, and then keep that raw data and work from there. Now that video data is saved as a DTA file, which is Stata's data format, we can now go to Open, click on Video Data, and Open, and now now Stata will clear out anything we had in memory and load up the data set. Like last time, we can enter any commands we want right into the command window and those commands will be executed on our data set. But we don't want to have to do that every single time we load up the data. To make things easier for ourselves, we will make a do file. A do file is essentially a script that contains a series of Stata commands that will all be executed with a click of one button. To make a do file, we need to open up the do file editor. The first line that I'm going to put into our do file is this first one where we want the do file to load up the data set we want. Now, a nice thing about Stata is that every command that we type into the window will show up in the review window. So we can easily click these and copy and paste them right into our do file. Now that I have something there, I'm going to save this. Now, you generally want to save your do file into the same folder as where you have everything. Now, 
Now that we have a do file, we can execute it. As long as you have set your working directory to the location of the do file, you can simply type do and then the name of the do file. Hit enter and that will run. What I usually like to do is test out the commands that I want to do right in the command window and then copy and paste them into the do file so that I have everything that I did right there and I can easily recreate what I just did. So the first thing we're going to do is open up the data browser and think about some dummy variables we want, might want to make. Right now we have a sex variable that is either one or two. Let's say that I want to make a dummy variable for female like we've done before. The most basic command in Stata for creating a variable is called generate or gen for short. When you generate a variable, the first thing you want to type is the new variable's name. So I'll put female. Now we want Stata to create a variable that is one for females and zero for males. So this would be equivalent to sex equals two. Now notice the distinction that a single equal sign is for an assignment, meaning the left thing is now the thing on the right, whereas a double equal sign is a logical equal. So we use that for if then statements. So what this will do is that female will be one for any time sex is two and otherwise it's going to give us a zero. Now we'll check if this worked. And we can see that all of the female observations match up just fine. So I'm going to copy and paste that right into my do file. So now anytime that I run the do file, it will load up the data set and then immediately after that generate our female dummy variable. Now if we return to the data browser, we can see that one of our variables, state, has all of the values in red. What that means is that it read this data as a string as opposed to a number. When even a single observation in a variable has a letter in it, it will automatically make everything a string. Unfortunately, Stata does not know how to work with a string, so we are going to have to either generate dummies for states, or we can encode the variable. So first I'm going to show you how to make a dummy variable based on a string. So let's say that we want to make a variable called Indiana. Now we want this to be one if state is Indiana. Now with a string, we always need to put quotation marks around the value. Let's see if this worked. Okay, that looks good. Another way that we can deal with string variables is to encode it into a categorical variable. To do this, we use a command called encode. Then we type the variable that we want to encode, and that's state. In Stata, many functions allow you to add options. Options always come after a comma. Now, encode has the option to generate a new variable for us. So we'll type gen, and then in parentheses, we'll call our new variable state code. We'll run that. Now let's see what this did. We can see now that the state code variable has all of the state names in blue. What that means is that those are labels that are put on top of the actual value of the variable. When I click on this, you can see that Illinois actually has a value of one and Indiana has a value of two. But now Stata will be able to use this variable for us. 
I'm going to save these new variables into the do file. And save it. Another important command to know is replace. Generate can only create a new variable, but let's suppose that we wanted to change some existing values. Let's suppose for some reason we wanted to add one to every value in the female variable. To do this, I would type replace instead of generate, then the variable of interest, and then we'll type in equals whatever we want to replace that with. So let's say female plus one. Now Stata will inform us that it made some changes and we can see what happened. As you can see, I have now added one to every observation. But there's no real reason to do that. So I'm going to run my do file to go back to what I had before. Now if we go back to the data browser, everything is back to what I had originally defined. The next thing that I want to show you is a slightly more complicated command called egen. Egen allows us to make more nuanced variable generations. In particular, it allows us to generate variables within groups. And that's going to help us out quite a bit for this week's material. Egen starts out just like the regular gen command. We'll type egen and then the variable that we want. We'll call this wage average. Then after the equal sign, then we type in the function that we want. So this is called wage average. We'll just make this mean of wage. And then we'll see what happens. What egen has done was go through everybody's wage value, take the average, and add that into the wage average column. And as you can see, everybody has the same because we've averaged everyone. But that's not the most useful thing. Maybe we want to know the average wage within each race. So I'm going to type in drop wage average because we don't want that anymore. And I'm going to define a new variable called wage average race. It's going to be the mean of wage again, but now I'm going to add an option after the comma. Now I'm going to type in by race. We'll go back to the data browser. What we now have is everyone in the same race group shares a wage average race. So all of the ones, the white observations, all have the same value. All the twos, the black observations, all have the same value there. A nice thing about this is that we can add even more variables into the groups. So let's say I want to make a variable called wage average race state. So I'll do the same thing, mean the wage, but now it's by race and state code. So now what, what it will do is give me averages for Indiana white, Illinois white, Indiana black, Illinois black, and so forth. Now, as you can see, there was a little typo there, so we're gonna fix that. And now we have our new variable. We open up the data browser and we can see the results. I'll wrap up this video by just mentioning a few basic Stata commands that are nice to know. First of those is tabulate, or just tab for short. 
tab will give you a nice summary of any categorical variable that you want. So we'll type tab race and see what we get. This will tell me that there are about 4,080 white observations, which make up about 83.95% of the sample and so forth for all of the other categories. We might also be interested in some summary statistics for our non-categorical variables. So for that, we'll type in sum and then the variable we want, wage. This will give me the total number of observations, the mean, the standard deviation, the min, and the max. And of course, as I talked about in the last video, regress or just reg for short is our regression command. We type our dependent variable first, so let's say wage, and then we type in all of our explanatory variables. So let's say age, female, Indiana. Now it's important to remember that the variables are case sensitive and we have our results. Stata gives us a very nice way to include categorical variables as well. So remember that although race is in the data as numbers, those don't actually mean anything. We need to create dummies for each of the races, which we certainly could do that by hand, or we can take this nice shortcut where we can type i.race. Stata will automatically create dummies for us and automatically omit the base group. In this case, it was race one, which was white. To wrap up, I'm going to just copy my average wage per race variable into the do file so that next time I can load this up and make use of that variable right away. I hope this video has been informative and will allow you to start getting a little bit more comfortable with using Stata. As always, if you have any questions about this, please let me know by email and I will do my best to help you out. Thanks for watching.